from an event that had everybody looking up to two near catastrophes in dump trucks. These stories and so much more coming up next on Richland Now. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Richland Now. I'm Gail Everett. Where were you for the historic solar eclipse of 2017? Did you travel to see it in totality? Or did you stay in Richland and watch from the comfort of your own home? The city of Richland held a viewing party at John Dam Plaza and several hundred people came out and made the morning memorable. The library handed out 250 eclipse glasses at the event and they went fast. Those without glasses made homemade pinhole projectors out of cardboard and aluminum foil to safely view the eclipse. The Tri-City Astronomy Club was at the eclipse event with telescopes set up where people could safely view the eclipse through their telescopes. The eclipse peaked in Richland at 10.23 a.m. with the moon covering about 95% of the sun. Well, a colossal road reconstruction project is underway on Wright Avenue. Work began on August 16th along Wright Avenue between Dupertail Street and Thayer Drive. The project includes complete removal of the existing roadway, over excavation of existing material, and installation of new base rock, top rock, and two inches of asphalt. Water services along Wright Avenue between Boise and Thayer will also be replaced. At the same time, the city's streets division will be removing and replacing the concrete ADA ramps. During construction, parts of the street will be closed to through traffic with limited access to homes, but will be reopened by the end of the day. Closures will occur on a block-by-block -block basis starting at Thayer and working towards Dupertail. Paving will require a full two-day closure of the roadway. Please visit Richland's Capital Projects page at the link below for additional information on this and all other current projects. Well, a unique instrument was unveiled at Howard Amon Park last year in a well-attended ceremony that featured members of the community, both young and old. The instrument was called an Imbarimba and was intended to be the anchor of an outdoor musical plaza. The community instantly fell in love with the in instrument, but before long, someone stole it. For months, the park has sat imbarimba -less but that it's about to change thanks to the Arts Foundation of the Mid-Columbia. The nonprofit has organized a fundraising campaign which aims to collect $10,000 by the end of December. The money will buy a new Imbarimba and get the ball rolling on the rest of the musical plaza. To learn more about the campaign or to donate, visit the link at the bottom of your screen. Richland City Council will consider an electric rates increase for all customer classes at its September 19th meeting. If approved, the rates will be effective January 1st, 2018. The proposed rate increase is due to a projected 6.5% revenue deficit, primarily due to wholesale power costs. Wholesale power is Richland's energy service's most significant operating expense, comprising over 60% of total expenses. Richland City Council discussed the proposed rates at its August 22nd workshop. The public hearing and first ordinance reading is scheduled for the September 19th council meeting, and the second ordinance reading is scheduled for the October 3rd council meeting. These dates are subject to change, so check the council agenda as the meetings get closer. Even with this proposed revenue increase, Richland Energy Services rates will remain some of the lowest in Washington state. Will two near catastrophes have us reminding you about fire safety? Two City of Richland Solid Waste Division garbage trucks had fires start in their hoppers recently. City officials report the fires were caused by residents throwing away barbecue coals into their trash, which then reignited after they were dumped into the garbage trucks. In both instances, the garbage truck drivers noticed the smoke in their hoppers and quickly dumped all of the material out of their trucks and called 911. The quick thinking actions of both drivers saved them from any harm and their trucks from severe damage. We're now urging the public to please be careful and cautious when throwing away used coals. Be sure to douse them with water and wait at least 48 hours before disposing of coals to prevent this from happening again. This Labor Day weekend, KSMF will hold its first annual Let's Kick Domestic Violence Charity Kickball Tournament. 
Proceeds raised will benefit the Katie Stralsund Memorial Foundation. The foundation is dedicated to raising awareness and the prevention of relationship violence in young people and lead to the establishment of a student scholarship. The tournament runs September 1st through the 2nd. Also, there is an award celebration and silent auction from 5 to 8.30 p.m. at White Bluffs Brewing on September 2nd. Come out and support a great cause. Well, I hope you are ready for a week in a beautiful weather and live music. The 21st Annual Tumbleweed Music Festival comes to Howard Amon Park September 1st through the 3rd. The event features over 100 free performances by musicians from throughout the Pacific Northwest. Listen, sing, and dance to folk music, bluegrass, and more. Try your hand at the open mic stage, take part in a sing-along, or attend one of the many free workshops. Tumbleweed Music Festival is a family-friendly event with something for everyone. Well, the Mid-Columbia Master Singers and the National Park Service are pleased to present a set of concerts inside the B Reactor National Historic Landmark. The concerts will feature a poignant musical work based on the Diary of Anne Frank. The performance will feature the Mid-Columbia Master Singers Chamber Choir and Orchestra, as well as guest soprano soloist Renee Heitman. The performances take place September 8th, 9th, and 10th, and tickets cost $65 apiece. For more information on the concert, including how to purchase tickets, is available at the website below or by calling 460-1766. Well, some high-speed, high-thrills go-kart racing is headed our way. The Northwest Gold Cup is September 2nd and 3rd at the Horn Rapids Kart Track. The track is located at 3234 Twin Bridges Road, and that is adjacent to the Richland Horn Rapids Landfill. For more than 45 years, the Northwest Gold Cup Series, one of the nation's oldest karting series, has been supporting competitive regional racing while maintaining a family environment. This series has remained a cornerstone for kart racing in the Pacific Northwest. The racing starts at 10 a.m. Join us for this year's All Senior Picnic on Thursday, September 21st from 11 to 2 in the afternoon. The Vegas theme picnic will be held at Howard Amon Park behind the Richland Community Center. The $7 buttons includes lunch, entertainment, vendors, and a chance at some amazing door prizes. This year, the entertainment will include Swingin' Hearts and Rockin' Souls with the Cooley Band from Vancouver, Washington. Lunch includes barbecue chicken, potato salad, baked beans, breadstick, and dessert. Buttons can be purchased at Richland Community Center and the Kennewick, Pasco, and West Richland Senior Centers. If you would like more information on any of the stories you have seen here, visit the City of Richland's webpage at the link at the bottom of your screen. And if you're not interacting with us on social media, I strongly encourage you to log on and like the City of Richland on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm Gail Everett, and thanks for joining me on this edition of Richland Now. Music